Welcome back from that break. Let's get into the next skill that you need to know in terms of graphing. And I'll focus on showing relationships by using a graph. So previously, we've looked at plotting and the importance of plotting accurately. We're going to move on to talk about sketching and reading off values from graphs calculations and graphs, if you like. So how can we use these? And the first thing that's quite an obvious one is reading off values. Now, just like you plotted, sometimes you might be asked, what's the value at, say, nine minutes? So if we count along the blocks, we'd recognize that's halfway there. And we go all the way up. We'd use a ruler to do this. I can't use a ruler. But we go up into the middle of that line and then come all the way across, and you can now read the value at that point to show you exactly what's happening on the graph. So usually in a question, you're asked to plot the graph and then do some calculations or reading of values. We can also do some sketch graphs, which we'll come to in a few minutes. So that's the first thing. So please make sure you show how you've read off the values. So don't just read it off and write the answer down, but show it with dotted lines across the graph like I've done there. The next thing that we often have to do is the calculation of the gradient of a line. Now, we don't have to do the calculation of the gradient if it's not a straight line that you know, is very clear and obvious in terms of the best fit curve or the best fit line. But calculating gradient is not something you can just do in your head. You have to show it on the graph. So again, if you've got a piece, you've got a, a graph like this, how do we actually get the gradient sorted out? Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look for a nice point that passes through some uh, big lines. So they should be at the intersection of two of those big lines. And I've looked all the way along, and I don't see anywhere that this graph cuts through two points that are on the exactly the, the, the intersection of two lines. There is one that, that links with two minor lines. So at that point, it cuts the, 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 the graph cuts the axis or cuts the grid point that are clearly defined. They're not in the middle of the point. So I'm going to take that as one point, and I'm going to look now all the way along here to see if I can find another one that cuts through exactly at that sort of intersection point. Now, normally it isn't difficult to find, but this time it does look like it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to have to give up on that. I'm going to take that one over there like that. And the reason I'm taking that one is I want to show the biggest gradient. Don't just take gradients that are the diff biggest change. I don't want to take changes that are small. I want to show the gradient by looking at the big change. So if I've taken those two points, remember what the formula for gradient is. So it's going to be the change in distance over the change in time. And we're going to take the, this point here that we, we wrote up, um, which has now disappeared, which was that point over there, um, as distance 2 minus distance 1 over time 2 minus time 1. Now, it's important, having looked at the points, that you actually write down those coordinates. So let's make sure that we've got that, that right. We recognize it's 14, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 0 15.2, 15.6. And so that would be 15.6 on the time. So the, the axis is 15.6. And the dependent value is going to be 15.6 as well. So those two points, 15.6, 15.6, that is point 0.2. Well, what about point 0.1? Well, point one is all the way down here, and I'm going to just estimate that that's going to be about there, which is 2.4. And guess what? The value on this side 
is also 2.4. So we're now going to plug those values into that equation and we're going to get the gradient calculation. So show the working on the graph and you often do it in terms of the change in the one divided by the change in the other. So we're going to say this one is delta T and this one is delta D and we can put those values in. I'm not going to do the calculation but you must show it on the graph. You must indicate what points you're using and do the calculation and you'll see that it will come out that you can calculate the gradient quite easily. Now that's one thing with calculation. The other thing with calculation is we sometimes need to remember we can calculate the area under the line or between the line and the horizontal axis. This doesn't only apply to motion graphs. Although the one I'm going to show you is a motion graph, please remember it doesn't only apply to motion graphs. It can be any graph. And that, that value has significance because the area under the graph is actually the independent variable multiplied by the dependent variable. And if that comes to a physical quantity, then that's what that area represents. So if we look at this graph, which shows velocity over a period of time, and it's a car traveling, we know that velocity times time is going to give you distance. So the area under this graph can be used to work out the displacement or the distance versus time graph. That little area is a triangle and we would use the formula for the triangle as half base times height and that calculation will actually give us the distance the object has moved in the first two seconds. And so as we carry on we can then find the distance for the whole time of motion using that big triangle and do that sort of calculation. Sometimes the graphs can be a little bit more interesting. So for example, we can get one that looks like this. And what I need you to understand here is we've got a bit of a trapezium. So we can break it apart into a triangle there, a triangle there, and a triangle there. Below the line, this is a negative space. This is positive because it's above the line. This is positive and this is a rectangle. And so you can work out the different areas using adding those together to get the total change in position or the total distance traveled. So it's very important that you can do this. Please remember there is a short way if you know the area of a trapezium. There is an equation for that and it simply says take the length of this one, the length of that one, and add them together and then take the height and multiply it. So the area of the trapezium is going to be the average, it's half of L1 plus L2 times the height. That will give you the area of the trapezium. Now remember that's all positive. You've got to subtract the negative part of the triangle below. What does that negative mean? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that now. So when you uh, look at relationships. Please remember that you check that you've got the, uh, the graph uh, and you understand the relationship between the variables. Include the headings uh, and the labels when you're sketching a graph because this can help us understand what's happening and you only add in a point when you're sketching if it is a critical value. So if something changes that's where you need to have it joined in. So let's have a look at a sketch graph that we might want to look at. So this is a, a, a distance versus time graph and you'll see here I've accurately pot plotted the points. That's not a sketch graph but it's giving you the, the shape of the distance time graph and as I've drawn it before, I'm going to draw it again, you can see that's like a parabola. And if they ask us now to say, so what would the velocity versus time graph or speed versus time graph uh, look like. And they asked you to sketch it from this graph, sketch the other one. Well, there's a, a trick here. When you're doing that sort of calculation, what you've got to look at is the gradient. And the gradient over here is zero and it's increasing positively and it's getting bigger and bigger. So the sketch graph that we would do for velocity versus time over here would simply be a straight line 
uh, like that. And if we were given a certain value, we could say, well, at 10 seconds, it was a particular velocity um, that we've been able to work out the gradient at that point. So that's a bit about sketching. Please make sure that you follow that very carefully. So guys, what we've done so far, we've done some plotting, we've done some uh, sketching, and I think we've done a lot to enhance our skills on graphs. Thank you.